roughly 25 kilometers east of Upper Muscadabe or 40 kilometers north of Sheet Harbor, you'll find the Abraham Lake Nature Reserve. It's perhaps one of the best examples of old growth red spruce forest in all Nova Scotia. In the past couple of years, a couple of looped hiking trails have been constructed here so that you can explore the reserve and reach Abraham Lake. And that's where I'm on my walkabout today. The nature reserve itself is 256 hectares or 634 acres. So the walking trails only cover a tiny portion of the protected land here. There are currently two trails, a one and a half kilometer trail, which takes you in for a brief look at the lake and the longer three kilometer loop that I'm taking today, which will go along Abraham Lake for a good portion of the walk. Both trails are loops, and as they connect, you could do both for a total hike of just over four kilometers. These trails are not accessible in winter, so if you're going to visit, be sure to do them in the spring through to the fall. Oh, and watch out for bears. They're one of many animals that call this area home, and one which can at times be a little inquisitive of people. Muskrat, otter, mink, and the endangered mainland moose can also be found being only a few years old, this is not a trail system that sees large numbers of people, except when there are organized events. These lands were donated to the Nature Conservancy of Canada in 1995 by Scott Paper. The lake itself, Abraham Lake, is owned by the province. And together, both of those parcels were put together and made a nature reserve under the Special Places Act in 2006. The land is still owned by the Conservancy, but is jointly managed with the province. Now, Nova Scotia has a number of different designations. A nature reserve protects in perpetuity special ecosystems, including plants and animals, and it allows for scientific study and education. Recreation is restricted in nature reserves, so if you're visiting here, be sure to take care in the area. These cut logs are a good example of the type of maintenance that's done in this area. Of course, the Nature Conservancy in the province of Nova Scotia want to ensure that this area stays as natural as possible, but they also want to make it safe. And so you'll find that they'll come through and they'll cut sections in the fallen trees so that the trail is still accessible. Nature reserves are often fragile ecosystems, so activities like forestry, mining, and motorized vehicle use are prohibited. Some nature reserves even require special permission to visit. Abraham Lake is one of a number of ongoing conservation projects of the Nature Conservancy of Canada on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia, which includes reserves at Muscadabit Harbor and along the Muscadabit River. This is the intersection where that shorter trail I mentioned meets the longer trail. So you can head off that way and just get a glimpse of the lake, or you can continue on the longer trail and walk right along Abraham Lake. That's where I'm headed. Scott Paper acquired these lands in 1971 and turned them over to the Nature Conservancy when they decided not to harvest them. Now, Scott Paper doesn't really have a presence in Nova Scotia these days, but back then they had quite a decent presence. Four years before acquiring these lands, they had built the Abercrombie Mill, which is now better known as the Northern Pulp Mill. It's under different ownership. So getting back to the connection of this land with Scott Paper and how they came to acquire these lands in 1971. I mentioned Sheet Harbor is around 40 kilometers away. Sheet Harbor was once a major and prosperous lumber port and wood would be sourced from a very wide area to service the mills. 
There were various mills in the area going back to 1863 when a sawmill was built in the community, marking the start of over a century of lumber operations in Sheet Harbor. Later, in 1885, a sulfide mill was built, bringing new technology. That type of mill was phased out over time, but a ground wood pulp mill, or a mill for making pulp for paper, was built in 1924, and its first shipment went to New York in 1925. It was first called the American Perforated Wrapping Company of Albany, New York. In 1933, it changed its name to the Halifax Power and Pulp Company. You see, mills in those days often operated hydro dams supplying power to their own facilities and local communities. The company went through many changes of ownership before finally being sold in 1964 to Scott Paper of Philadelphia. So was formed the Scott Paper Company Sheet Harbor Division. The mill used 27,000 cords of wood a year and employed 100 in the mill and between 100 and 200 harvesting in the forests. The company had ownership of 115,000 acres of land in the area, supplying half its needs. The year Scott Paper took control of these lands around Abraham Lake was also the year their mill in Sheet Harbor was destroyed by Hurricane Beth. But by then, that much larger Abercrombie mill had been operating for a number of years. A mill that was such an investment at $50 million that it made news in the New York Times. Hurricane Beth marked the end of pulp and paper operations in Sheet Harbor, as Scott Paper moved to focus on more economic processes and products at their new mill. Harvesting timber in the old growth forest around Abraham Lake would have almost certainly been attractive to Scott Paper for its new mill in Abercrombie. But the lands also had international attention for conservation value. That's after the break. Won't you be mine? Feel the sunshine. trees are so tall here, you just can't help but keep looking up. This forest was part of Scott Paper's harvesting plan until they decided to pull the old growth forest out and donate it to the Nature Conservancy. But for 24 years, these woods were at risk of being harvested, and the old growth forest would have been gone forever. For almost the entire time Scott Paper held these lands, this old growth forest was recognized for its significance. In the early 1970s, the International Biological Program, through the Conservation of Terrestrial Biological Communities Committee, identified Abraham Lake as important. Half a century later, the Abraham Lake Nature Reserve remains an outstanding and extremely rare example of old growth red spruce forest. In this area, you will find trees that are over 200 years old and 30 meters tall. Forest workers in the past have even reported trees much larger than that, over 400 years old and 100 meters tall. That would be the height of a 30-story building. Well, this is Abraham Lake. It's the lake that the reserve gets its name from. It's a little bit difficult to see from here, but this lake is relatively clear, unlike so many lakes in Nova Scotia that, as a result of peat, have a brown or tan color to them. And believe it or not, really dedicated people will carry their canoes down this trail and head out onto this lake to do some bird watching right along the shoreline here.
Sadly, the threats to this forest did not disappear once the threat of harvesting disappeared. In the mid-2000s, this area was hit by a spruce beetle outbreak. It really devastated many of the older red spruce in this area. Now, normally the spruce beetle goes after white spruce, but here it was the red spruce. The beetle can spread to other species of spruce when populations of the insect increase dramatically, as has happened here. Spruce beetles attack the growing part of the tree trunk, called the cambium, often killing them. Adult beetles tunnel into the bark and lay their eggs inside the tree. When the larvae hatch, they feed inside of the tree on that cambrium layer, burrowing tunnels through the tree. The tops of the trees die, and because they become so hollow, they will sometimes either blow completely over or are snapped by the wind. The damage to trees is usually seen before the beetles themselves. Things like faded yellow and red needles, boring dust around the trees, holes with resin, and loose bark or holes where woodpeckers have hunted for the beetles are all potential signs of infestation. These trees are certainly tall, and the evidence of damage from the spruce beetle. Wow, I mean, you can see the holes in this bark, but you can also see where the tops have just snapped right off. This forest is obviously dominated by red spruce, but it's also a great example of an Acadian forest. And so in here you'll find eastern hemlock, white pine, sugar maple, and American beech, among many other trees and plant species. As a place of scientific study, understanding the species in this forest is important. Conservancy and government research staff together with volunteers conducted a bio blitz to document this ecosystem. Experts have identified many species of lichen, mosses, plants and animals, including of course the birds you hear all around you. This is a popular birding location and a number of birding websites encourage reporting your findings. Volunteer groups also occasionally organize birding walks through these trails Participants come from all over North America to participate. However, you're more likely to hear many of the birds rather than see them in this forest. With low human impacts and being so remote, this is a safe spot for birds. The forest is popular for goshawks and barred owls. And along the lake, you can find northern water thrushes, mergansers, loons, and spotted sandpipers. Abraham Lake Nature Reserve is definitely a special place. It's remote, but it's certainly worth visiting. The trees here are some of the oldest you can find anywhere in Nova Scotia. But this old growth forest won't be around forever, at least not like this. The forest is under constant stress from weather, from age, from things like the beetle infestation. And so the forest is ever changing. One can only hope that it's able to regenerate and heal over time. To support this forest, the Nature Conservancy has developed a management plan which prioritizes protecting this reserve. The plan helps to identify things like these trails that can offer low impact opportunities for people to enjoy the area while ensuring that the ecosystem can heal and thrive. However natural forces change this landscape, it's protected forever thanks to the hard work of many and the stewardship of the Nature Conservancy of Canada. 
After the break, I'm heading about oh, an hour east of here and closer to the coast to visit another trail that has a connection to the industrial past of Nova Scotia's eastern shore, this time a connection to mining and freshwater fishing. About an hour from the Abraham Lake Nature Reserve, straddling the number seven highway, you'll find Liscombe Lodge. Now Liscombe Lodge has been serving fishermen, outdoor enthusiasts and hikers for over 60 years. And tucked behind chalet number 10, you'll find the Liscombe River Trail. Now this trail was originally built by avid salmon fishermen looking to access pools where they could chase fish. Today, the trail is popular with hikers from across the province and it's maintained by the lodge itself. It takes you all the way up to a suspension bridge and a 15-step fish ladder. And it's here that I'm on my walkabout today. Heading out on the trail, the first part is a well-maintained gravel trail. This is also the location of two other trails, the Crooked Falls Trail and the Riverview Trail. The Liscombe River is a popular fishing river and the salmon run here goes from around the first two weeks of June through to the end of October, peaking in early July. As I work my way up this trail, I'll eventually intersect with the Liscombe River Wilderness Area. Now much like the Abraham Lake Nature Reserve, it's a protected area under the Special Places Act. Now there are lots of opportunities in that wilderness area for backcountry canoeing and camping and hiking. You can cross through old warden routes and it intersects ultimately with the boggy lake and alder ground wilderness areas as well. The Liscombe River Wilderness Area exists to help protect the watershed of this area. It includes wide corridors along Liscombe River and its main tributary, Little Liscombe River as well as an area of remote woodland east of that tributary. The wilderness area was designated to not only protect the river and the watershed itself, but to ensure water quality for brook trout, the small Atlantic salmon run in the Liscombe River, and many other animals. The Liscombe River here flows southeast to Liscombe Harbor. Now it's had a long history of industrial type development. In the 1920s, this river was used to run logs. Then over subsequent years, a number of dams were built up and down the river for various interests from mining to power generation. Recreational angling became popular in this area in the 1930s. It waned in the 1940s due to war, but post-war, it continued to increase in popularity. And while it's had its ups and downs, it continues to be a popular pastime. Liscombe Lodge itself was originally built in the 1960s to attract recreational fishermen. Along the length of this river, it opens up into these slow-moving pools. Now, these pools give fish an opportunity to rest as they're moving upstream through the rapids or while they wait for the water level to increase. It takes a lot of energy to go through the rapids and sometimes they need to wait for the water levels to increase to make it passable. But because this is kind of a respite area, if you will, for fish, they're also popular places for people to salmon fish. The water in Abraham Lake was relatively clear. And when I was there, I mentioned that the water in many of Nova Scotia's lakes and rivers actually appears brown in color. The Liscombe River is one of those brown rivers. The reason is ancient history. Over 15,000 years ago, glaciers scraped away a lot of the soil and dumped it into the ocean. The remaining bedrock is covered mostly by organic soils, like peat. Even the foam you see along the river is the result of that glacial process. The lack of mineral content in the runoff along the river makes for very soft water, which easily turns to foam. The foamy areas can also be good places to fish, as the foam traps insects along the water, which the fish enjoy as a meal. 
There have been various industrial interests along the river, ranging from mining to forestry. By the mid-1970s, the only industrial developments in the watershed were the sawmill operations of Louis Erskine Company Limited, located on Big Brook Lake, and the woodland operations of the Scott Paper Company and the Nova Scotia Pulp Company. Life as a salmon traveling upriver is not easy. I mentioned the dams that got built. Well, they were man-made obstacles along this river for those fish. But they're also natural obstacles like rapids and waterfalls. You know, Nova Scotia has a 100-year history of using small-scale hydro developments to generate electricity. This is Liscombe Falls, and it was the site of Nova Scotia's first hydro development. It was constructed by mining interests in 1903 and then much later on taken over by Nova Scotia Power, and it operated until the 1970s. This enormous pipe is where the water rushed out of the power dam and back into the river after generating electricity. It's one of the only things that's left of the original dam. This is the Liscombe River fish ladder. It's 15 steps that take fish around Liscombe Falls and up river. It was built in 1977. Now the way a fish ladder works is fish literally jump from step to step as they make their way. The hope had been that building this ladder and stocking the river for a few years with juveniles would result in not only salmon, but other species like Gaspero thriving along this river and the population growing to a point where it would support a growth in both recreational and commercial freshwater fisheries. That never happened. The salmon run remains relatively small on this river. Liscombe River is one of the preeminent wild rivers in all of Nova Scotia. And at Abraham Lake, you find one of the rarest examples of old growth red spruce forest in the whole province. They both invite you to explore them to find out why they are special places. Wherever your next walkabout takes you, I hope you find your own special places. Yeah.